two platforms without talking about the Jeffrey Camelita. These will be back. To modernize it, they'll be in a more clog style. You guys want to I'm a trend forecaster, and there's an obscene amount of evidence that the indie sleaze Tumblr aesthetic is coming back, and we need to talk about it. Indie sleaze took off in the early 2000s to fall. Um, maybe. So at this point, you may or may not have heard everyone on the internet talking about how the era of indie sleaze is gonna come back, or it's coming back, or it's back, or it's not even a thing and it never was, and just stop talking about it altogether. <laughs> One thing is for certain, we have all lived through the indie sleaze era whether we are aware of it or not. Unless you're like 10 years old, which I don't know where your parents are but at least you have good taste. <laughs> so Indie Sleeves is the era roughly between 2008 and 2014, and it's been defined by music like Lana Del Rey, The XX, Sky Ferreira, The Olsen Twins, Alexa Chung, Kate Moss, in Hunter Boots at festivals, the TV show Skins in the UK, American Apparel ads, and more specifically when it comes to fashion, creepers, disco pants, felt hats, wild fox, T-shirts, thigh-high socks, and messy hair. Another part of the indie sleaze culture has been glamorizing mental illness and EDs on Tumblr. So I'm not one to really sit and make an entire video discussing every trend that's out there, but the thing that really intrigued me about the indie sleaze era was when I read this. Indie sleaze has been described by some as an optimistic response to the Great Recession. And when I was on Aesthetics Wiki, it also mentions that it's often seen as a counterculture reaction to the economic climate of the recession. So when I see fashion, culture, and global disasters like the Great Recession all in one sentence, you bet your pretty little ass that I wanna look more into it, analyze it, see what that means about our current culture and why that is repeating. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. But first, a quick message from my daddy. <laughs> Today's sponsor, Pula. I have been talking about Pula so many times now that at this point, if you do not have your own Pula case, I will be burning your house down. <laughs> this is really aggressive marketing. I don't think Pula is gonna approve of it, but they deserve it because they are the creators of the world's first and best biodegradable phone cases. They are completely plant-based. They will break down in your backyard in an industrial compost, not in your pocket. On top of that, they have the cutest designs. They're also super soft to hold because you're not touching plastic. Also, Pula cases are drop proof with military grade protection for up to six feet, which is almost two meters. And I have an iPhone 11 with no protection on the screen and I have it for two years now. And I need it to break at this point because the camera is old as fuck but my Pila case will not let that happen. If you want to get your own case, Pila is offering an amazing discount. Visit the link in my description and use the code KristenLeo to get 30% off your order. Huge thank you to Pila for sponsoring today's video. As I mentioned, Indie Sleaze has been described as this optimistic response to the 2008 financial crisis. And outside of the US, what place? Tell me, children, <laughs> do you remember? What place outside of the US was the epicenter of the Great Recession. Was it Greece, perhaps? Was it the country that I grew up in? How great it was that I lived through the worst recession of our lifetime, hopefully the last. I was living in the center of Athens when it was on fire almost every week from protests against all of the austerity measures that really destroyed the future of all young people, my generation included, uh, because a bunch of corrupt politicians basically pawned our lives away and none of them 
suffered any consequences for it. Not a single one of them. The good thing was that during that time, we're all too young to care, too young to bother. We were reading Ozon magazine, which was the it indie fashion magazine in Europe during that time, because it was also free and we were also very, very broke. We partied, we did drugs. We starved ourselves, I fashion blogged, I dated a Benetton model. <laughs> I went through the craziest depression of my life during that time, which subsequently led to me reevaluating my life, dropping out of uni. <laughs> I really was a mess back then. So yeah, as always, I have overshared <laughs> with uh, what my experience was during the Indie Sleaze era. But yeah, I wanna examine why did the indie sleaze era even happen? And why are we seeing a resurgence now? There are some very characteristic things about the indie sleaze era that are repeating now in our culture. One of them is the TV show Skins. It was massively influential during my time. I was obsessed with Cassie as a girl that has an ED. I was just like goals, you know what I mean? Hashtag thin. Well, all of that is like obviously really problematic, but during the time I was maybe 19, 20 years old and it was very acceptable during that time to glamorize EDs. If you went on Tumblr during that time, it was a very interesting place. Uh, since then, ED content online has been completely shadow banned but it was not like that back then. And you know, the repetition of skins is now Euphoria, which is again, a teen show that is exploring the more dark side of young adulthood through drugs and like girls fighting over mediocre guys. We barely had smartphones during that time and they sure as hell did not have filters on them. But what we did have were the MacBook filters where it would create like the dodgiest green screen. I had a friend that had a MacBook and every time that we would hang out in their house, we would like just goof around with the filters and have a great time. Now, of course, filters have gone so far beyond the MacBook, like green screen roller coaster rides and aquarium filters. Uh, to the point where you can look like a completely different person and nobody's ever gonna notice. Also, YOLO was a big thing back then. Going through a financial recession, you more so adopt the mentality where you say, you only live once, let's party, let's have a good time, nothing matters, we don't have a future anyways, let's might as well have fun. And YOLO has now been replaced with nihilism, which is pretty much the same thing, just a more sophisticated word <laughs> to describe it. A lot of young people are looking at the climate crisis. They're looking at the gap between the rich and the rest of us just growing. There's inflation, things becoming more unaffordable, housing becoming completely unaffordable, rent insanely expensive. Just the cost of living is wild. And of course, indie sleaze being bred out of the great recession. And now it's resurgence coming back. What? What kind of global disaster happened recently? What was something that like traumatized all of us? <laughs> what was it? The funny thing is, now that I'm asking that question, the other question that I'm asking myself is which one of all the things that happened in the last two years? Was it the global pandemic? Was it so many of your loved ones dying? Was it the rise of insanity and theories? Was it the fear of nuclear war? Which one? Which one? So I definitely think that the mentality and the philosophy of indie sleaze is already back. I am feeling it in myself. I'm also feeling this like, fuck everything. I just want to have a good time sort of feeling that we all experienced back with the great recession, like 10, 12 years ago. And I'm also going through the motions of being like, this, these last two years sucked and I wanna have a good time. I wanna party, I wanna go on dates, I wanna meet people, I wanna socialize. Am I gonna be dressing the same way that I dressed 12 years ago? Mm -hmm. I wasn't planning on, but let's go through 
my fashion blog outfits from that era. For the most part, it wasn't that bad. I don't look at my outfits during that time and cringe, but also I'm not really that inspired by it. I did a lot of denim, a lot of heels, the Jeffrey Campbell Lita boots. I had those in uh, taupe. I also had the clog Jeffrey Campbells. Back then, I also wore real fur. I'm telling you, I've said this before. I was a horrible person. Still am, just slightly improved. Oh, Oh, also the other thing was the headbands. I had sparkly headbands. I had a headband that I made out of a ribbon of feathers, the felt hats and the bowler hats. I had a lot of those. I also rocked the thigh high socks. Anyways, uh, as the light goes out behind me, also things are getting more serious. <laughs> I am not in a serious mood right now at all. But as I was doing research for this, what I found really interesting was the cultural impact of global disasters and how we've seen a repetition of basically what people are calling now the Indy Sleaze era multiple times and even before 2008. So when 9-11 happened in 2001, that was obviously another very US focused disaster, but it did have a global impact. And I think especially here in Europe as well, we most of us that were conscious during that time remember the day it happened. It was a mass traumatic event and it led to a lot of changes happening and creating a new normal. And then when the 2008 financial crisis happened, that also had a massive impact on our psyche. It was a huge traumatic event and it ushered us into another era of a new normal. And then of course, with the global pandemic, we're getting again <laughs> thrown into another traumatic event that leads to a new normal. When these global traumatic events happen, they lead to an increase in anxiety, depression, EDs. And we see a repetition of that happening with every single one of these disasters that have occurred during our lifetimes. And so we see that with 9-11, we see that with COVID, we see that with the recession, we see that now with the war. I mean, the COVID and the war, we really never really got time to recover. And so it's just like whiplash psychologically. But what I found really fascinating is how each of these events has directly led as like a domino effect to the next disaster happening. So here is my theory, all right? So we have 9-11 happening. Paired with the conspiracy theories, we see a growth in distrust towards government, which kind of justified. George Bush comes forward in one of his speeches and he urges Americans to shop. We cannot let the terrorists achieve the objective of frightening our nation to the point where people don't shop. People are using shopping as a coping mechanism for their trauma. People are getting more and more and more loans in order to shop more, in order to consume more. And of course, the banks are the ones that are to blame for shorting all of these loans and basically making a profit out of loans that they themselves knew would not be able to be paid off. But the rise in consumption is what led to these loans being given out and ultimately the Great Recession. So 9-11 itself, I believe, had a direct impact on fueling the Great Recession. But then you're thinking, okay, Kristen, how did the Great Recession though cause COVID-19? Because we had the Great Recession, that was used as a fantastic excuse to justify lowering the budget for education and healthcare. So from the moment that the healthcare systems around the world are being less and less financially supported, the inevitable breakout of a virus is not the problem. The problem was that our healthcare systems were not strong enough in order to cope with that. Mind blowing, I know. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this theory in the comments below. Just say anything in the comments below, really. I'm giving you this video for free. The least you can do is either share it, comment below, both. If you can do both, I would very much appreciate that. And of course, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye.